So let's look at the standard access control list implementation by going through a simple example. So here I have a network. I have three devices on the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network on the left. And then I have a web server at 192.168.10.10. So I'm going to make up a rule. And I literally made this rule up. It didn't come from anywhere else but my own conjuring in my head. Now, let's go dissect this and make it work as an access control list. So looking at the access control list line there, we have permit or deny. Then we list the source IP address and then the wildcard mask. The alternative to this is the way that I did it in the previous module. And that's where we simply say permit or deny. And then we say the word host, which means one single IP address. And then we list that one single IP address next. When we're working with this, the command host and then the source IP is exactly the same as source IP with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0. Remember, I say if we take our IP address and we add the wildcard mask, that will tell us the last address in the range of addresses here. So if we add all zeros to any address, we're going to get the same address. So when we have a source IP address and a wildcard mask of 0, 0, 0, 0, that is identical to putting the host word in front of the IP address. As a matter of fact, the router will actually change your syntax if you use the 0000 wildcard mask, it'll actually change the syntax to use the host word. Does that mean you should always use the word host in front? Nope, you need to do what you want to do here. Uh, both are completely valid and legitimate ways to enter the command. And as I was just saying, we also have the numbered option. The syntax is very, very similar. Instead of moving into a sub configuration mode where our prompt changes, here we just create the command and we say access list. We give it a number between 1 and 99 or 1300 to 1999. Those numbers are reserved explicitly for standard access control lists. After we write the number, and we can pick any number we want there as long as it's in those ranges, we then issue the command permit or deny. We put our source IP address in wildcard mask, just like we did in the named access control list. The same rule applies here about that host word. We can either use host and the source IP address or the source IP address in a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. If we take a look at this, we're going to build our access list, and I'm going to call it example one using the named access control list commands. We have a range of addresses here. The first address is 10.0.0.16. The last address is 10.0.0.17. So if I write those out in binary, we'll see that the only bit that changes is that very last bit. Otherwise, all the other bits in the IP address are identical in both addresses. So what that means is we're going to make a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.1. So I have my first address of 16, the last address of 17, and my wildcard mask of 1 there. What that means is I can rewrite that as 10.0.0.16 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.1. So here we go. I want to permit the traffic from those two devices to get access to the web server. So what I say there is I say permit 10.0.0.16.0.0.0.1. And now that statement will allow either address 10.0.0.16 or 10.0.0.17. As an alternative, we do not have to use a wildcard mask. If we wanted, we could just list out each single address individually. This is not bad if we just have two IP addresses. However, when we start to get to larger ranges of IP addresses, maybe we want a whole subnet, a slash 24. It would be ridiculous to create 256 lines in the access list when all we want to do is select a range of a slash 24. So with the slash 24, we just need a wildcard mask of 000255. And we can have our access control list list one line for all of those addresses. So we do have options here with our access control list. There's no one right way. There are some best practices, but ultimately you write the access control list to accomplish the task you have at hand. So we're going to stick with the original one here using the wildcard mask. And we have to remember that there's a last line of our access control list that says deny any. So whether we write it or not, that line is there. I oftentimes like to add that deny any line at the end of my access list just so that I have a mechanism to track how many hits that deny any statement gets 
what will happen is when I apply this access control list, the router will actually tell me how many times a packet hit each line of the access list. And by hit each line, the router is going to examine the source IP address of the packet, compare it to the access control list, and when it finds a match, it's going to take the action that's designated. So if the source IP address is 16 or 17, we're going to permit that traffic. If the address is anything else, we're going to deny that traffic. Since the access control list that we set up says allow the source IP address of 10.0.0.16 and 10.0.0.17, we need to make sure we apply our access control list in a direction that is consistent with the flow of the traffic when the source IP address is coming from the 10.0.0.0 network. So for our cases, since this is a standard access control list and I will temporarily follow Cisco's rules, we're going to put that standard ACL as close to the destination as we possibly can. And since our traffic is flowing from the left to the right, we're going to apply that access control list in the outbound direction on interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1. So here's our access control list. We're going to apply it to F01, which means we say interface F0 slash 1, IP access group example 1 out, so that we're filtering the traffic as it leaves the router and heads to the web server. So let's take a look at how the router is going to process that traffic. We have all three devices and they're going to send a message to the web server. It doesn't really matter what the message is because we can only look at the source IP address. So let's just assume that all three devices want to get the website at 192.168.10.10. So they all open up their web browser, put the address in, and hit enter. So what happens is each device sends its SYN message out to the router. And when the purple message comes in, the purple message is from 10.0.0.17. So what we do is we compare that to the access control list. And we look at the first line first, and we find out if there's a match. And since the source address of the purple message here is 10.0.0.17, that falls within the range of that first line of our access list. So we're going to permit that traffic and forward that traffic onto the web server. Then our second packet in the queue hits F01, starts to leave the interface, and we look at our access control list, and we do not have a match on the first line because our green packet here came from 10.0.0.128. And if I look at my line there, that only allows for 16 and 17. So what happens then as I go to the next line of my ACL? Well, here the filter is anything. And the action we're going to take is to deny it. So the message from 10.0.0.128 gets denied and we throw it away. Then we have our next message come from the maroon computer, 10.0.0.16. We compare that to our access control list. We have a match on the first line. So we permit that traffic and we forward it onto the web server. So effectively, that is how the access control list is processing traffic. After the router decides what to do with the message and forwards the message out of F01, before that message gets forwarded out of F01, we have to put it through the access control list filter and find out what action we should take based on the source IP address information.